Show. You know my first guest tonight from the newsroom, Brokeback Mountain, and as the beloved Chief Hopper on Stranger Things, please welcome David Harbour. <laughs> Pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. I like the new look. Uh, what, what, do we is call, that? what do we what call is on the, this? The, uh, well, yeah, uh, a, you're looking super trim. I trimmed down. Yeah, trimmed I, I lost down, a little bit got, of weight. Yeah. And you got. And you got. Go ahead. <laughs> you're halfway between, uh, you know, glorious locks and uh, and a mullet. You're really. <laughs> You're really flirting. Like You're flirting word, with I, Billy Ray Cyrus. I here. like the word halfway. You're halfway to a I'd mullet. I'd say five eighths mullet. Yes. You know, one yeah. eighth uh, hope. Yeah. <laughs> or you look like you look like a European hitman in an '80s movie exactly. who has no lines. That's with the suit and everything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 You smoke a cigarette like this. I should maybe. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's good. I have to study with yeah. you one day. What? Why? What's the inspiration? Uh, this is just me getting weird. Um, I'm gotcha. uh, currently unemployed, and so uh, wow, it's tough, tough. So in those times, I like to just grow out all the uh, hair on my body, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm doing a lot of writing and stuff, and mm -hmm. so I just sort of sit around and don't groom very well. All right. Yeah. Now I got to talk to you about the, the the last thing I saw you in, uh -huh. which is this uh, this little program, you know, can do. You know, a little tra engine that could called Stranger Things. Yes. That Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Yeah, you, know, you have emerged. You have emerged from that as a uh, as a sex symbol. Uh, I guess so. Yes, you have. So. I mean, because I guess... the new sexiest man alive issue has just come out, and look who is one of the sexiest men alive right there. Look at that. Uh, I, I'm, very, I'm very excited for uh, People Magazine next next month. There's going to release uh, men wandering around Lower Manhattan's Bed Bath and Beyond looking for the perfect dish towel, <laughs> and I'm also in that yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, I'd also like to say that I got Sexiest Man Alive um, when I had a full mustache and a 40-inch waist. So, <laughs> thank you, America. Wow. I'm yeah, not you the were, sexiest you, you man, were, I'm one you, of the sexiest. No, you're one of the sexiest men. Yeah. Um, uh, you're a quarter page sexy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how sexy you are. John Legend is very sexy. Very sexy. He's multiple I'm... pages. Idris is a full page sexy. Right. You're 25% you're as sexy as Idris Alba. I'll take it. That's I'll it. Take it. Now, I'll take how, it. how does it feel to be the sexy? Because uh, you were the guy, you were the dad bod guy. You know, you were like the king of dad bod as, uh, as Hopper. Yeah. Did you, what, you you lost it? You don't have the dad bod anymore. I, I'm sort of I, I have slimmed down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Is this hangover from getting jacked for Hellboy? <laughs> no, the uh, the weight gain for season three was uh, hangover from getting jacked for Hellboy. Oh really? Yeah, because uh, I didn't realize this, but if you work out a lot and then you uh, decide to stop working out and just eat donuts, <laughs> your body remains very large. <laughs> But it just transfers from up here to down here. Yeah. yeah. And you get very hippie. Mm. Yeah. You wore it well, is what I'm saying. Hey. Thanks. What? I wasn't sure what word, some words going to come out after you said. Neither was hey. I. Hey. Thanks. <laughs> um, OK, uh, let's see. Um, the show is a phenomenon, as I said before. When did you know it was going to be big? Did you um, have a hint? No, I had the opposite of a hint. I had, uh, I was sure it was going to be a complete disaster and a big failure. Because before it came out, I mean, I remember when we were shooting, too, we would all sit around and talk about how terrible it was going to be. Uh, <laughs> and then, mainly because of my performance, I thought that I was, like, tanking the whole show. And then before it came out, you know, you normally see things, and, like, on buses, and I live in New York, I'm wandering around on buses, on phone booths, there's, like, ads for new ads shows. Ads for shows everywhere. Not a single ad. Uh, 
uh, three weeks before the show, a week before the show, and I was doing a play with a friend of mine who's on a very successful television program, and I said to him, I was like, no ads, no ads. Uh, I guess they're doing some kind of new campaign. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, no, they're, they're burying the show. And I said, what does that mean, burying the show? I don't understand your television lingo. And he said, they're, they hate the show. They're trying to make sure no one watches it. And, uh, and then the show came out, and it was a, like, overnight zeitgeist success. Because, like, my phone, I have a bunch of telephone numbers in my phone from people that, like, like I'll have a driver, like, five years ago, and he'll be like, put my number in your phone. Like, and I, I put in the phone. And then, you know, and then I would get texts from, like, drivers, like, for the last 10 years, being like, I saw Stranger Things. He's so good. Like... <laughs> They're all, they all have horrible Ukrainian accents. <laughs> exactly. Apparently. He sounds like but, the Russians in last season's Stranger Things, exactly. actually. Yeah, he sort of does. But, uh, yeah, so that's when I kind of knew that it, it took off. But before that, I really thought it was going to be, you know, I really thought it was going to be nothing. And then people just sort of embraced it, and it became this sort of grassroots event, and it's very gratifying. Um, you did something recently that I've always wanted to do. You went to Antarctica. Yeah. And I, I think we got a shot of you. Yeah, this is you. What? There you go, with what some penguins I... there in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the sexiest man alive. Look at that pose. I, uh, Showing I, off for the wildlife in Antarctica. I recently went to New Zealand, which was, it takes forever to get there and back, and yeah. I still haven't recovered yet. But how long does it take to get to Antarctica? It depends on what your form of travel is. What did you, how did you get there? Uh, I took a boat. Have you ever been on a boat? Yeah. <laughs> They're the things with the, you stay dry on top and the bottom's all wet? Mostly. Yep. Depends on what passage you're going through, because this particular boat didn't always stay dry on top. We were in something called the Drake Passage on a Greenpeace icebreaker for four days. Is that down by Tierra del Fuego? Is that yeah, where exactly. That is? Okay, yeah. And it's apparently the uh, largest stretch of most treacherous open water in the world. Sure, the Roaring Forties. Uh, yeah. Uh, and so it was so... <laughs> it, so it takes about a half hour by plane. And it took us four days. At points, we were going one mile per hour <laughs> because the storm was so bad. I could have walked to <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> but uh, but it, the swells are 40 feet, too, 20, 20 feet up and 20 feet down. Wow, how big of a boat so, are you on? Not a big boat, really small boat. <laughs> like, there's like 20 people in the boat, not a big boat. That's not a big and boat. So, so what you would do is you would lie in your bunk and I remember, like, the swell would come, and literally, you'd just be lying on your bunk, and it would r you'd rise up out of your bunk, and then the swell would go down, and you'd slam into your bunk like a G-force would hit you like that, and then back up, and then down for 80 hours straight. It's an anti anti-gravity chamber. Yes, and there's no breaks for, like, sleep. Like, the, the ocean's like, you know what? You need six hours. <laughs> We're going to calm it down. No, How did you do this? I, Why did you do it this way? Because I'm an idiot, clearly. I mean, <laughs> I was like, adventure. Sure. Sure. Have you, had you done much boating never. before? Never. <laughs> Will you never, ever do boating never again? Never been on a boat. No. Holy I cow. I threw up like half an hour in and then stopped eating food <laughs> for four days. You can survive if you just drink a little bit of water a day. If you sure. don't do that, you are sure. going to die. Were you with any friends, or was it, is it just you? Yeah, I was with a girlfriend at the time, and oh. so I would... Uh, Did this end that uh, relationship? Well, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I was awful, though. She was so, sort of fine, and she'd come in, she'd be like, are you okay? And I'd be like, don't look at me! I'm disgusting! It was like Gollum or something. In sure, the... sure, sure. Well, when you got there, was yeah. it worth the four days of uh, just pure I hell? Mean, I have to say it was. Okay. Like, it, what did you, when you go there, what do you do? You, you meet a penguin, and then what else do you do? <laughs> you mean, lie down, have the sexy photograph on the beach. Yeah. That, no, it's, I mean, it's like an extraordinary, we were going for Greenpeace to protect the Weddell Sea, which is this, you know, sort of untouched landscape, this big sea in the, it's apparently as large as five Germanys. When you can measure something in Germany, it's sure, sure. like a big deal. <laughs> Common but, unit uh, of measurement. But it was, you know, we just saw all this wildlife there that was so extraordinary and that you don't get to see anywhere else in the world. I mean, I remember, like, you'd walk on the beaches of these, you know, glacier things. And, and I remember walking along the beach, and there's creatures there, like, we're walking along the beach, and out of the ocean, like, 50 feet in front of us, comes this thing called a leopard seal. Do you know what a leopard seal is? Yeah, they got big fangs and everything. They're really... Kind of. They're like... T this one was about 12 or 15 feet long and about wow. uh, 3,000 pounds. 
and it just slithers up like a giant yellow sea slug with a leopard face <laughs> and proceeds to like look at us and then vomit out two almost entirely intact pe penguin skeletons <laughs> all over the beach. And then I swear it smiled. <laughs> and then it went back into the ocean. So like stuff like that you can't sure. get in Hoboken. No. You gotta go you gotta where go to the Antarctica. action is. In Antarctica, yeah, yeah. Now I understand you're writing a book, because it's your first book. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. I, ooh, it's hard to talk about this because it you means I actually have to write it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, don't wanna, I'm, I don't want to. No, 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 Try no, muscles no, no, no. from Michelle here. No, it's to... great. It's a book. Uh, I'm very excited about it. So you're mid book. Yeah, I'm like mid book. Yeah, you've written a book. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, is it supposed to be frustrating at the mid-book part? Point? It is, uh, it's the most agonizing thing, yeah. in my opinion, that you could possibly do. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I think it was, um, Flannery O'Connor said, uh, writing is a process by which one's hair and teeth fall out. Okay. And that's what it feels like. You feel like, I, this will kill me, I will die. So I'm gonna have less hair and less teeth by the end of this? Yes. Wow, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, uh, I'm really excited about writing it, though. I mean, I've had, it's something that's very near and dear to my heart. I mean, it's like, it sort of investigates, it's kind of a memoir, but it's about my relationship to uh, a mental illness um, and my uh, having been institutionalized um, and sort of dealing with the whole medical community around a diagnosis of being bipolar. And, um, you know, uh, I think it's rare to see people who are, you know, sort of successful, who have had really deep struggles with mental illness, sort of come out and say, you know, to people who are struggling with it, like, it's okay. You can be successful, have a large cultural voice, you can do a lot in this world. Just because you are deemed mentally ill doesn't mean that it's some kind of death sentence. And I think that, like, thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful message. Good message. Come back with the book, please. I will, I will. David, lovely to see you. I see you too. Stranger Things is streaming on Netflix now. David Harbour, everybody. We'll be right back with Karen Olivo and Aaron Tveit from Moulin Rouge, the musical.